Welcome to this workshop on process simulation. In this workshop, we'll demonstrate how a dynamic process simulation can be created using the tools that are commonly available in your DCS system. The example we'll use in creating this simulation is a spray dryer that is used in many different applications. In the first part of our workshop, we'll look at how going from the PNID, we can break the process into smaller individual processes that then can be uh, used in simulation. By creating a simulation diagram, it is very possible to easily go to implementation of the simulation. We'll then demonstrate the dynamic response that is achieved using the simulation we create for the uh, spray dryer. In the uh, spray dryer process, uh, a liquid uh, feed is provided to the spray dryer and is sprayed into the top of the unit. Uh, also, hot air is then provided that then acts as a drying mechanism. And at the bottom of the tower, then we then have a powder product. The moisture content of that is of concern to us. We need to maintain a certain moisture content through automatic control, then we're adjusting the temperature of the air supply to the spray dryer to maintain a product uh, concentration that we would like to have. The uh, feed rate to uh, the spray dryer is critical. As the nozzles start to plug, then the pressure goes up for a constant feed rate. If the pressure gets too high, then this should override the feed uh, to the uh, unit to keep the spray from being too fine. And so this is the uh, typical type of control strategy. Uh, the spray dryer itself, if we go from the PNID, we can draw balloons around each of the smaller units that are characterized by an input that then is acted upon to produce one or more outputs. In this particular uh, unit here, we've broken it into five sub-processes, the slurry flow process, the spray uh, spray pressure process, the air heater, airflow, and tower process. Each of these is characterized by a single input, or in some cases a couple of inputs, that then are acted upon to produce one or more process outputs. So by breaking our process into these smaller units, it makes it much easier to create reusable components that can then be used in creating our process simulation. So we go from that PNID that was uh, where we circle the subunits. Each of those then becomes a box on our process here. The outputs of the controller become inputs to our process simulation, as those shown on the left-hand side. Also, we can introduce disturbances into a process that can be used in operator training and also in checking out our control system. The outputs of our process then become the inputs of our control. Uh, so those are being written then to the input blocks that are normally are used to access the transmitters in the plant. So from the control system standpoint, by connecting the simulation into the uh, control, uh, it looks as though you're operating in the, the plant environment. So it can be very effective in terms of control checkout. In terms of going from the simulation diagram to the control, uh, we are going to be uh, developing a simulation where the outputs of our controller become the inputs of our simulation. The inputs to our control are the outputs of our process simulation. So uh, we can implement the simulation independent of the control. We only need to know the inputs and the outputs that are used within the control. Going from our simulation uh, outline of the subunits of the process, then we can create a simulation diagram. Going from the simulation diagram, we can then, each of the blocks within that, then become a composite and a module that is going to be used to create our process simulation. So in this case, the tower itself is represented by one block. Its output is the product moisture. Uh, we are representing the slurry flow where we have the valve from the control determining the slurry flow. The way that is done is the valve position 
we add in some noise to it, we go through a dead time block, a filter to give us a first order plus dead time type response for that flow loop. That would be very typical of what would be seen in a plant. Similarly, for the other uh, flow loops, we represent them as first order plus dead time. So we can use the same composite over and over again for flow uh, to give us an accurate representation. The only difference would be the time constant of gain to characterize each one independently. For more complex units, such as the heater, which have multiple inputs, then we use a little bit of engineering in terms of energy material balance. Here we're calculating the energy per unit of air to then determine the temperature of the outlet air. Uh, for the tower simulation, it would be very difficult even with a high fidelity simulation package to represent the tower accurately. Here we take the inputs uh, that we have for the process we then uh, use each of those and say each input can impact each output in a matter of first order plus dead time. So that relationship is then defined by dead times and gains and uh, the um, a gain associated with each input and its impact on the output. Uh, those then can be summed up to give us the net result of each input impacting the process output and all that is characterized as first order plus dead time type response which is what we know from plant testing and step testing within the plant is, is about all we know about it. Having the, uh, developed then the tower simulation that way uh, then all we have to do is change the dead times uh, and gains and lag uh, to represent the dynamics that would be typical of our uh, tar process. And representing the process in this way, then it will behave very similar, similar to what you would see in the plant operation. To look at our simulation online, then we'll go to online. So we're looking at the simulation running in the controller. So based upon the valve positions, then we're calculating the flows. We're then, uh, based upon the flow inputs to our process, uh, the tire process, then we're calculating the moisture uh, coming out of it. Looking at our control, going into the online mode, then the outputs of our simulation become the inputs to our uh, control. The controller is acting upon those to produce an output. Those outputs then become inputs to our process simulation. So from the perspective of a person working with the control or an operator training, the control behaves very similar to what it would in the actual plant itself. To demonstrate the dynamic behavior, let's change the feed rate from 6 um, uh, tons per hour to 5. So we've uh, dropped uh, our feed rate by about 10%. Uh, and uh, as a result, we see that the actual controller is changing the valve, that's changing the flow, and so the flow uh, to the unit is, is dropping. And uh, in response to that, we see the pressure that was simulated is actually changing, which impacts the way the uh, pressure controller is working in this override strategy. It's still not being selected because the pressure is within the pressure constraints. So as we drop the flow, we notice that the uh, pressure drops off. Uh, there's a definite impact upon the uh, moisture but our feedback control on the moisture content then is uh, adjusting the, the uh, heat to our unit to maintain a product moisture at a set point. So in this way, by having a dynamic simulation, it's very easy then to check out our control logic to make sure things are working correctly. And also for operator training, they can become familiar with the controls before they actually use them in the operating plant. So uh, these types of simulations can be very easily created using the tools within your control system and can be done very quickly and are quite effective in both operator training and in uh, simulation checkout, in the, in the control checkout. 
So uh, I hope this uh, demonstration then of how to go from the PNID to your simulation diagram to simulation and how it works uh, has been helpful and I would encourage you if you aren't using simulation to give this a try in your own control system and use it in operator training and control system checkout.